Hey guys, Angelo here. Welcome to another design tutorial. Today, I want to show you how to use the timeline panel in Adobe Photoshop. Follow along in this lesson and learn how to create an animated text reveal, as well as a photo slide effect for an Instagram stories video. Let's get started. All right, so on my screen, I have an Instagram stories project that I'm working on. And you can see at the top and the bottom of the project, I've left some space to add some text. So let's start by doing that. I'm just gonna grab the type tool, click anywhere on the project. I'm gonna click the check mark to accept that. And I'm just gonna click on the move tool and then press Command T. What I wanna do is scale this up. And while holding Shift, I'll do just that. I'm gonna type in Spring Collection because this is a mock social media post for a fictional um, women's clothing line, perhaps. I wanna scale that up and I want this to go over two lines because this is going to be viewed on a mobile device for the most part. I wanna make sure that the text and the animation that we set up is visible to everybody viewing it. So I'm just going to center it to the project for now and hit enter. And you can see in my layers panel here, I have the text layer there, spring collection. Now, instead of repeating that same process, what I'll do is just option drag another copy. And I'm gonna bring it down below into this space here. And this will be just 25% off. Now I kinda wanna center it to this, this rectangle down below here. You could center it to the actual project, but I'm gonna put it kind of centered to that rectangle there, okay? And so the idea here is, I want this spring collection title to appear as an animation when someone views the story, but I just don't want it to fade in. I want a cool transition, perhaps have it reveal out of a, a line. So I'm gonna show you how to do that using layer masks. For this, I'll need to select the line tool. If it's set on rectangle tool, which it may be by default, just click hold for the flyout and select line tool. I'm gonna hover over my workspace here, hold my shift key and draw out a line, roughly a little bit large, longer than the title. Now you can see the stroke is black and I want it to be the same color as my text there. So I have that. I also want to increase the size of the weight of the stroke. So something like maybe let's try eight, we can always decrease. That's good there because I want it to be visible when the, the animation starts. And so what I'll do is have it maybe line up to the frame of the image. We'll add the images in just a sec. So I have my text here and I also have my line. Let's go ahead and add the images to this project. There's three all together, and we'll animate those after as well. You can see in my layers panel, I have a main images folder. And within that folder, I have a rectangle. You can see I can turn it on and off. Basically what that's gonna be is a container, and I'll clip the images so it fits that rectangle that I've set there. So what I'm gonna do is just drag all three images that I have into my project. And I wanna put them into that main images folder in my layers panel. And then I'll, I'll show you how to clip them. So I'm going to check that, check that, and check that to accept all three. Now you can see image one, two, and three. I'm just gonna hold my shift key to select all three. And I wanna drag them into that folder there. And then while holding option on a Mac, Alt on Windows, go in between each layer and then click, click, and then click again. Now you can see if I turn these off, they're all there and they're contained, they're clipped inside. So that's exactly what I wanted, but I do wanna reorder these in the order that I have them numbered here. So you have one, two, and three. And so what we'll do at the end is have these slide in or out. Um, so we'll have the text appear and then the images slide through so you could see the products that the, the, um, the sale is all about, okay? 
And so now we're ready to start animating the text. For this part, we're going to need the timeline panel. And to access it, just go to Window and Timeline. And basically what we're doing here is creating a video timeline. We're going to render this as an MP4, which you can go ahead and share on your Instagram story or any social media post for that matter. So I'm going to click Create Video Timeline and you'll see all the, layer, all the layers from my Layers panel are pretty much duplicated here in the timeline. And this is where we can start adding the animation using keyframes. Before we get too far ahead, I want to zoom in here and I'm going to click on the rectangle marquee tool and I'll show you how to add a layer mask so you can animate the text coming out of the line that you see there. I'm going to start my selection on the line and then just select the rest of the text. It doesn't have to be perfect, just make sure that you have the, the text selected. And then you can see in my layers panel here, I do have spring collection selected. I'm going to make my way down here and click on add layer mask. In my layer mask here, you see the little link button. We have to unlink it. And then I'm going to click on the text portion, not the mask portion, because what I want to do is I want to move the text. Um, so you'll see when I move it to the left, it'll mask out and it'll look like it's coming out of the line. Before I do that, we have to go to the timeline panel and in the spring collection uh, layer, I'm going to click the arrowhead to drop it down. And I want to select transform by me clicking this little uh, icon here next to transform. It's going to add what's called a keyframe. So I'm going to click that and you can see that the keyframe is activated. I'm going to grab my move tool. I'm going to hold my shift key and drag this to the left. And you can see it's masked out and it looks like it's going to come out of the line. Okay. So something like that is fine. I'm going to move the scrubber to about maybe, well, let's move it to maybe that area there. And I'm going to add another keyframe. And in this case, I'm going to position it back to where I had it or wherever you want it to be. So something like that is fine. Now, if I go back and play it in my playhead here, you could see it's animated just the way I've set it up. Next, I want to add an animation to the line. To do that, I want to right click line one in my layers panel and convert it to a smart object. What that'll do is it'll give me the ability to add a keyframe to transform the line. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. And what I usually do is add a guide at the top, the bottom, and the middle. And what that does, it helps me when I'm transforming it to know where the, the start point is and the end point. So what I'm going to do is going to grab the scrubber and go all the way to the beginning and add a keyframe to my line layer. And then I'm going to hold uh, command T. And then I'm just going to take the top of that and bring it to the middle guide and do the same thing down below. Okay, so it'll be something like this and then just click the check mark to accept that. I'm going to go to the same area and add another keyframe, Command T. And I'm going to drag the top right back to the top of that guide and do the same down below. Grab the bottom and move it down to the bottom and then select that and you can see I'm going to set that up so it makes more sense, but the line actually transitions with the text. Now I want the text to come in a little bit after. The cool thing about this is I can move the keyframes. So if I click on the first one in Spring Collection, hold my Shift key, click the second, I can move it to the right a bit, and you'll see the line animates the text comes out. Let me zoom out so you can see, have a better look at that. Okay, and the text comes out. Now what I want that to do, the line, I want it to reverse the animation that we've set up. So I'm going to select this area here 
and add a keyframe. And then add another keyframe there. Now, instead of repeating the same process of transforming the line, what I can do is click on the first keyframe in my line animation, right click, copy. That will be the last keyframe here because it will close. I'm gonna right click and paste that setting on my last keyframe. You can see the line is gone. I'm gonna click on this second keyframe and that will be this keyframe here. So I'm gonna right click, copy that, click on the first keyframe in the second set and then paste it. And so what that'll do now, let's play it. Open, text, close. Open, text, close. Great, so we've set up our first layer mask with our first animation. Let's go ahead and add the second animation down below for the 20%, 25% off. So this is gonna be the same process. What I'll do is click on the rectangle marquee and select 25% off. With that selection activated and 25% selected in the layers panel, go ahead and click add layer mask. You see that the mask has been applied. I have to unlink it and then select the text portion, press V on your keyboard or click on the move tool. While holding shift, go ahead and bring that up to hide it. I'm gonna click on the 25% off layer in my um, timeline and add a keyframe. Move the scrubber to where you want it. Add another keyframe. And then with the text portion still selected and your move tool selected, click, hold shift and bring that back down. And you can see as I'm moving the scrubber, that animation has been applied now as well. So let's go ahead now and play the entire animation as we've set it up so far. I'm just gonna zoom out and let's press the space bar, spring collection, and then 25% off. I may move the 25% off keyframes to the left a little bit. And then you can see if you actually drop all these drop downs, you can see where the keyframes are. And that may help you or it will help you gauge where to set everything. So spring collection, you can see that those keyframes are to the left. And in comparison, that's where the 25% off is. There's a huge gap, so I'm just gonna bring these over to the left, just so things play out in a better time. So I'm gonna press my space bar, and you can see that comes in a lot cleaner. Let's do that again. Spring collection, 25% off. So I'm comfortable with the pace of that. Now we can go ahead and add just a sliding animation to the three images in this project. So remember, in my layers panel, I set up a folder with three images, image one, two, and three. I'm gonna click on the first one, and in my timeline, I also have that selected. I'm gonna add a keyframe, move the scrubber to the area that I want, add another keyframe, and while holding my shift key, I'm just gonna drag it off or out of the page, okay? I'm gonna click on image two and drop it down in the timeline. Move the scrubber a little bit. Cause again, I want the first, I want the second slide to appear after the first one is finished. I'm gonna click on the transform to add a keyframe. Hold my shift key. Actually, I have to add another keyframe. And now I'm gonna hold my shift key and drag this one off the page as well. And so the entire social media post, the animation will end here. So what I wanna do is play this back and see how it looks. And then I'm gonna show you how to render it as a video, an MP4. So I'm gonna move the scrubber all the way to the front, hit space bar. There's the text animation, 25% off. There's the first slide, second slide, video's done. 
So let's go ahead now and render this as a video MP4, which you can share on your Instagram stories or any other social media post. To render the video, what I'm going to do is click on the timeline options. You can find that here in the upper right hand corner of the timeline. I'm going to click that and select render video. That's going to bring up this secondary dialog box here. The name, you can rename it. I'm going to leave it the same as my project, but you do notice there it has .mp4. So that is exactly what we want. The format, you want to make sure that it's H.264 and the preset should be set to high quality. You can see that the document size is set up at 1080 by 1920, which is the size of my project. So I'm going to go ahead and render that and then open it so we can view it. So here it is, my social media video that I'm ready to share as an Instagram story. Let's play it and see how it looks. There's the first animation, the second, and the photo slide. So that's how you use the timeline panel in Adobe Photoshop to create animation and render video for social media posts. If you enjoyed this tutorial, if you found it helpful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to get notified when new lessons have been posted. Check out these videos to learn more about interactive design. See you in the next video.